Hello, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and I've got an interesting update on the state of the climate around Australia and the climate forecast that's going forward in the next couple of months. Now, uh, one headline that has been thrown around quite a lot lately is the fact that we are heading into a La Nina uh, period and that is where we have cooler waters over in the Eastern Pacific Ocean and warmer waters around Australia, typically La Nina meaning much warmer waters around Australia resulting in much heavier rainfall, especially through the nation's east and combining that with the observed negative Indian Ocean Dipole, we've got a really bad setup for heavy rainfall across Northern Australia, particularly for Queensland and also parts of Western Australia. But there's lots of spanners in the works. The recent SSW event and the lack of rainfall that we've seen across Southeastern Australia really throwing a spanner into the long range forecast. So what can we expect for our locations? Well, I'm gonna be going through that in the next couple of minutes. So stick around to the end of the video. If you haven't already, then please do consider subscribing as well. I'm gonna break it all down for you in the next 10 minutes or so. Let's get stuck straight into things with the current state of the Nino 3.4 index over into the central Pacific. Pacific Ocean. Now the Nino 3.4 index is just north of Tahiti around the equator and it's the anomaly of sea temperatures that we see uh, above or below the long-term average in the surface temperatures of the waters in the tropical Pacific Ocean and right now they're sitting at about 0.79 degrees Celsius below that long-term average just above La Nina thresholds. Now for a La Nina to be called by the Bureau of Meteorology we need to have at least two months of these blue uh, temperature anomalies here which is where temperatures are less than uh, more than 0.8 degrees below the long-term average. Now we've currently had about two weeks or so of that. They've recently just jumped above that kind of threshold to 0.79. But the long-term trend right now is that we're seeing these sea temperatures begin to cool once again. And through mid-November, we are expecting a very weak La Nina to begin to develop. At the very least, we're expecting a strong cool neutral phase to persist into early 2026 when sea temperatures are then expected to rise. Now we're no stranger to La Ninas. We actually had one at the end of last year and that's why we had such a wet summer, especially through Queensland's north and southeast and also through New South Wales. We had a very wet winter period over there and that was driven by the La Nina late last year. Uh, and that was not a strong one, not especially a strong one, but it was still a significant one at that. And then the last La Nina period was way back in 2021, right through to about 2023. We had pretty much La Nina conditions spread out throughout that entire time period. And again, some pretty heavy rainfall through parts of Northern Queensland in 2022. And of course, culminating in 2023 with Cyclone Jasper in North Queensland, kicking off the wet period for North Queensland that we're currently in. So what is the forecast right now, we're starting things off in November. We are just below that Nino 3.4 index re, uh, uh, threshold to see that La Nina be called at about 0.8 degrees uh, Celsius below the long-term average. And we're expecting these temperature anomalies to dip even further into November. And then into December, we're still expecting these La Nina conditions to remain. We're then expecting these sea temperatures in the Nino 3.4 index to begin to jump rapidly. And we can see that here on the forecast. We get back up towards neutral thresholds in early 2026 and potentially even in towards El Nino conditions by mid-2026 if we extrapolate this forecast here from the Bureau of Meteorology. So there's not one forecast model ensemble that beyond March has uh, La Nina uh, conditions in the Nino 3.4 uh, region, which means that the one that we are heading into right now, if it even develops, which is really on a knife edge, it's a 50-50 chance the La Nina develops, it's not going to be a strong one. That's what that is telling me. And to be honest, it doesn't really matter if a La Nina develops at this point in time, because we're still headed for a very strong cool neutral period, which is kind of just that 90th way, 90th percent way towards uh, a La Nina. So it really doesn't matter at this point in time. The conditions and what's going to happen rainfall-wise is pretty much going to end up being exactly the same over in Eastern Australia. Another major driver for Australia is the Indian Ocean Dipole as well, which is very strongly negative right now. It has bounced back a little bit to about 0.08 degrees below, uh, 0.8 degrees below the average uh, offshore from Western Australia, but we've still got very strong positive sea temperature anomalies offshore from Western Australia, which you can see on this map here. It's a very, very warm picture offshore from WA and a very warm picture offshore from North Queensland as well. Now, these warm waters driven by that cool neutral slash La Nina that we're seeing develop, and these warm waters here offshore from Western Australia driven by that negative Indian Ocean Dipole. Now, warm waters across the top end of Australia almost always means elevated rainfall. It most certainly means elevated moisture value streaming in towards Australia and particularly across northern Queensland, as we have seen in the last couple of days. In fact, I could show you that right now. We've had some extensive thunderstorm activity through a wide section of northern Queensland that's been ongoing for the last couple of days. And that's still ongoing right now. Lots of thunderstorm activity, again, driven by this moisture that's being pushed in towards northern Queensland especially, but that also carries over towards the Northern Territory and Western Australia as well. Now, 
Now, moving things forward into the forecast part of this forecast update, we're expecting above average rainfall throughout the next couple of weeks, especially through northern Queensland, the Northern Territory, and a wide swathe of Queensland just in general. With these thunderstorms, we are expecting plenty of rainfall to make itself felt. Uh, the next week or so is looking dry across eastern Australia. We should see an uptick in rainfall towards the end of October, though, but this is really in jeopardy. Now, this boils back to the sudden stratospheric warming event that we've made plenty of videos here uh, on in the last couple of weeks. The sudden stratospheric warming event is where we've had that massive jump in temperatures high above in the stratosphere, uh, above Antarctica, 30 kilometers up in the atmosphere. We saw temperatures jump by 50 to 55 degrees in just a matter of days, and that's thrown everything into haywire. It's pretty much reversed the polar jet stream over Antarctica, and that's now beginning to filter down into the atmosphere and is driving dry uh, conditions across Victoria, New South Wales, South Australia, and Tasmania. So whilst this forecast for the end of October and into early November does actually remain wet for Victoria, New South Wales, South Australia, and uh, Tasmania as well. It does remain marginally above average to significantly above average in terms of rainfall. I have a bad feeling that this rainfall is going to leave us on the forecast. We're going to see a return to the dry conditions down there, especially with this now beginning to filter down into the atmosphere. And I can show you that on the forecast models right now, uh, if I can get rid of all of this faff here over on windy.com. But you can see it later on into the forecast period, we do actually have a significant uptick in rainfall, driven by a bit of a surge coming down from that Indian Ocean Dipole, or driven by the Indian Ocean Dipole when the MJO kicks off. I know a lot of big tropical language in this video update, but and the Banjulian Oscillation, that energy serve working in conjunction with the IOD, expected to send some moisture down through tropical Australia, and that's going to translate into some rainfall making its way through the Great Australian Bight, and then in towards late October, which you can see here on the 27th and the 28th, a bit of a frontal activity moving through into southeastern Australia. But I have a really bad feeling that we're going to see this leave us on the forecast models, and it's just going to result in a few light showers and a few light drops of rainfall through parts of coastal Victoria and South Australia, and very little rainfall further inland, if that makes sense. Unfortunately for central Victoria, South Australia and New South Wales, which are now entering uh, pretty much drought conditions, or if they haven't entered them already, but you can see some pretty significant drought intensity uh, here, particularly into the Gippsland region of Victoria. I know they've had some very good rainfall throughout the last couple of months and uh, in just the last couple of years, the Gippsland region has been pretty wet as well. And same deal for the east coast of, Victoria, uh, of New South Wales, rather. This rainfall has now left them for the last couple of months and we've got a lot of places that are now looking especially dry through these locations. And you can see it only does get worse and if they don't see rainfall down in these parts of Australia very soon we're going to have some pretty significant problems. This doesn't really include Tasmania. It's still quite dry on the east coast of Tasmania but the west coast of Tasmania very much above average in terms of rainfall and those soil moisture anomalies here you can see through the west coast of Tasmania very much above average as well but again at the end of this forecast here on October 22nd we've got some very significant reductions in soil moisture values through Victoria and New South Wales at a time when soil moisture values are expected to be at their highest or nearly at their highest in any, in any calendar year after winter. So that is some quite concerning stuff. Now for the northern parts of Australia, rainfall is going to start soon and it's going to come in thick and fast. Now, uh, as we have been talking about, the Indian Ocean Dipole is strongly negative. That's going to be favouring lots of rainfall and lots of tropical moisture offshore from Western Australia. So we're expecting an abundance of cyclones and tropical lows well offshore from Western Australia, very similar to how last cyclone season panned out. This will eventually translate into some rainfall through December, January and February through parts of Western Australia, particularly through the Kimberley region, the Pilbara region, and also into the Gascoigne. We're expecting above average rainfall, and this will likely come from the passage of significant thunderstorm outbreaks and also potentially tropical low weather systems, especially the further north you go. But one thing that's really caught my eye, and that is over in Eastern Australia, December right through to late February is expected to be far above average in terms of rainfall, particularly December itself and February itself. Significant rainfall is expected through wide swathes of northern Queensland, parts of the Northern Territory, and even down in towards southeast Queensland. So let's start with December, which you can see right now, significant swathes of green across the Cape York Peninsula. Some big moisture expected to move into the Cape York Peninsula, and that will include the Casper Coast and the Daintree Rainforest in northern Queensland. And this is also going to translate into above average thunderstorm and moisture availability across southeastern Queensland. We could be seeing some good thunderstorms on the Capricorn and Fraser coastlines as well. I still reckon out as far out as late November, we're going to see thunderstorm activity in southeast Queensland, so Brisbane and the Gold Coast, and even parts of the Sunshine Coast throttled by this SSW event. It's not as strong the further inland you go in towards western Queensland and central Queensland, but especially through southeastern Queensland and wide sections of New South Wales. These thunderstorms are really finding it difficult to come through, and as such, rainfall is probably going to be on the lower side of this forecast here 
which you can actually see less rainfall than usual is expected through November through the Brisbane and the Gold Coast city areas. And that is again because of that SSW. But anyways, moving forward, January expected to be another wet month as it, as it normally is. But the key point here is above average rainfall. Of course, there's going to be heavy rainfall. It doesn't even matter if it's below average rainfall in this map here through northern tropical Australia. Even you can see a couple of pockets here through the Kimberley region in January and on the northwestern and uh, northeastern NT coastline as well. There's still going to be some pretty significant rainfall there. It's just going to be slightly below that average threshold. Uh, but again, big rainfall expected through uh, northern parts of Queensland and through coastal Queensland as well. February expected to be a massive month for rainfall and I'm seeing lots of signals of significant tropical activity into the Coral Sea, especially talking from the perspective of tropical low or tropical cyclone activity. There's got to be at least one or two cyclones into the Coral Sea in the month of February with this type of setup here. This is a very similar rainfall forecast to what we saw at the end of February and into early March of 2025. And that is, of course, when Tropical Cyclone Alfred made its passage down into the Coral Sea and then into Southeast Queensland. In fact, the picture was pretty much identical. Now, of course, I'm not for a second calling a tropical cyclone or tropical low impact into Southeast Queensland. At this point in time, that would be bananas of me to do. So we're not going to be doing any of that here on the Cyclones Oz channel. This is a science-based prediction and not a wish-casting tinfoil hat forecast. But uh, it definitely looks like we'll be seeing elevated tropical signals into the Coral Sea into late February, uh, into early February and into mid uh, parts of February as well. So definitely between February 1st out to about February 15th, we're going to have some tropical low or tropical cyclone activity very likely to occur into the Coral Sea and it will be a time to watch. And then just as quickly as the rainfall starts, it looks like it's going to wind down. You can see March still expected to be wet through parts of uh, the Coral Sea. This is another interesting signal here, and that could be indicative of more tropical low or cyclone activity out into the Coral Sea. However, you can see dramatically dry conditions for the northern parts of the Northern Territory and then in towards the northwest of WA as well. And that carries over into April, May and June as we get into the winter months of 2026. And that lines up with the long range prediction of an El Nino uh, weather period coming in, uh, especially in towards the later parts of 2026. 26, we could be looking at a weak El Nino beginning to develop. That's what all long range models are now beginning to point towards. And that's going to dry things up across Queensland and the Northern Territory, especially quickly at the end of the wet season. And it's not good news either for farmers down in southeastern Australia as we get out towards the farming months and the winter months, June, July and August of 2026. However, the good news is it's not set in stone yet. The rainfall forecast doesn't go out that far yet with any kind of reasonable reliability. So we're holding our breath and kind of crossing our fingers and uh, crossing our toes as well that the the forecast is going to change a little bit for the better across southeastern Australia at this point in time, looking slightly drier than usual for 2026 across our uh, southeast and also parts of our southwest as well. But that is looking very long range at this point in time, and there's no real reliable forecast that can go out that far to make an accurate prediction. Now, why do I use these long range models? This is a bit of a question that I've been getting once I've been making these forecasts. Well, they're actually really reliable. So these are made up of what's called ensembles. Now, uh, forecast ensembles is basically just one model run, and these forecasts, or the at least these graphics here that I'm looking at right now are made up of thousands upon thousands of these model ensembles. So you can think of it as a blend of thousands upon thousands of forecasts all mushed into one. And then I'm taking the overall trend of that, which makes these incredibly reliable, incredibly consistent. And you'd be thinking, how can you be reasonably or reliably saying tropical activity into the Coral Sea out in February? Well, it's because it's a constant trend that I'm seeing on these forecast models here. And we're expecting that above average rainfall because we are seeing that constant and consistent trend on these forecast models. It actually makes these long range models here from the CFS, which is what I'm looking at, some of the most reliable forecast modeling that we have uh, at our fingertips here. And it can actually prove to be a lot more reliable than some of our short or medium range weather forecasting and numerical models. And that's why I use them so extensively in my Facebook posts and here on YouTube as well. And if this is your cup of tea, then please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. The support lately has been massively appreciated. And again, we're nearing, we're knocking on the door of 50,000 subscribers. I don't do this for the numbers, but it is an exciting milestone for myself and it is almost at the point where I can uh, do this full time and that's a very very exciting thing uh, to be able to say so thank you so much to all of the support lately it has been massive uh, and check out the Facebook page as well special shout out to the channel sponsors their names are on screen right now I could not on the show without them and that is going to be all for me today I'll catch you on the next storm goodbye